Hello, this is Kade, and well, CitizenCon day one has passed us, and we are preparing, of course, for day two, and there has been a lot of really exciting stuff shown, and I definitely want to make a video on the Star Engine, but of course I am a spaceship nerd, so I need to talk about the RSI Zeus lineup here. Now, I'll try to keep this one fairly short and concise, but if you want to have the extremely short version, they're freaking amazing, they blow the competition out of the water, if any of these ships fulfills a role that you want to play with, you know, for yourself, probably with one, two friends, get one of these ships. They are amazing. Going a little bit of more detail, I'll go over each of them, uh, look at the, talk about the component race, the price point, and their competition, and then we'll show you really why they are just excellent ships. Like the only downside that you will see throughout this range is that the firepower is relatively limited, but everything else is excellent so starting off then with the essential or the exploration ship don't know why they use the same naming scheme as the horror it doesn't make a lot of sense but it doesn't really matter we have the es here so this is our explorer like all of them the crew size is three the lengths widths and heights are all the same at 46 34 and 8 and the cargo capacity for the es comes in at 32 which is not amazing, but it's also not terrible, so very well respectable there. The weapons loadout, as I said, it's somewhat limited. We have fixed size 4s for the pilot and a single size 3 remote turret. As for the weapons for the pilot, because of their location and the way they're mounted, you're probably going to keep them fixed. As with a gimbaled loadout, you would have very limited horizontal movement and pretty much only vertical movement. For the component tree, uh, we're looking at a single size 3 radar and fuel tank for the exploration version and four size 2 shields, which is absolutely excellent. This is really class leading, like the Freelancer series has only two size 2 shields and the Cutty and the Spirit series both have only a singular size 2 shield. So you have a lot more hit points in your shields there. For the rest of the components that are not listed here that matter, like power plants and coolers, it also doubles up on size 2 components. So in that it is already far better than the Spirit series and of course the Cutlet series, and it equals the Freelancer series. Now this listed as an explorer is a little bit of a stretch, but I do think it makes for a good all-around ship. And definitely with that higher capacity radar and the longer range it has, if you do want to do some like looking around for you know, wreckage or other interesting locations. It could do the job, but it's not like a dedicated going out into the depths of space sort of explorer. This is more of a local area explorer. Going on from the ES, we go to the Clipper. So this is our cargo version. And it is really, 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 really good. And the most important thing here is that we see the same sort of capability that we see with the Crusader Spirit C1 with our rear mounted tractor beam. This, of course, helps you with loading and unloading cargo in places where there are limited facilities and, of course, most limited facilities in deep space itself. So that's going to be a very useful feature. But the most amazing thing about this one is a 128 SU cargo capacity that is really blowing the competition out of the water. So whether that competition in your Freelancer series, your Cutlass or even Argo Raft, it just exceeds all of them. And then for the component trees here, we are making a bit of a change from the essential. We're going down to size 2 radar and two size 2 fuel tanks. And also we're losing one of our shield generators. But three size 2 shield generators is still class leading. So it is a very, very capable little ship. Like if you have a Crusader Spirit C1, definitely drop down the upgrade for the clipper here. So your upgrade is going to be for the war bond here. It's 135, just like the essential, and 115 credits. So you're looking at a upgrade cost depending on which, if you got a war bond or a credit originally, an upgrade cost of between 25 and 50 dollars, which is of course a fair amount. But the amount of capability that you get in return for that is so much more that I think it's really hard to justify and not doing it. If you're running a freelancer max series and stuff like that, probably also you want to upgrade. This thing is just more capable than either of those ships. And for the final version, which is of course the most interesting one, the Mark over here, this is being marketed as our bounty hunting ship and it has all the features for it. But of course, the things that make a ship an excellent bounty hunter 
in this category also make it an excellent pirating ship. So if you're looking into the uh, combat profession and you want to do the more interesting form of combat, so those are the bounty hunting and the pirating operations, this ship is really hard to pass up. Now I will say because of the remote turrets of course need to be controlled by other players, this is the ship where you definitely want to go with a three-man crew. So you have your pilot and one of the persons on those turrets. And then you probably put some distortion weapons on those turrets, combine that with the EMP that you already get with on the ship. And then of course a quantum dampener, and you can just snare enemy ships so you can tackle them, they can go the way. You're very swiftly being able to disable their ships. And then of course you can commence the boarding operations to retrieve the goods that you want, whether that is a bounty in the form of a person, or whether that is what is ever stored inside of the cargo hold. Now it only has officially 16 SCU of cargo capacity, but if you look at the interior layout, yeah, you can probably fit a fair bit more cargo in there if you're just, you know, being like, it is not secure, but it will do the job. So yeah, this ship is going to come out at a high price, so 170 war bond and 190 credits. But it is a really, really good all-around package, and it's really tempted. And in general, this entire lineup is literally Sue's coming down and just being like, Remember who is in charge, Robert Space Industries. Like, it is insane just how much these things outclass their competition. And they do it all in a very nice, like this modern uh, Dorito RSI style that of course we're seeing a lot here. Yeah, they're just really hard to pass up. And I think if you want that chip for that multi-role, multi-crew gameplay, but even if you're running solo, for quite a few of these operations they are really hard to pass up they make for an excellent excellent ship uh, to get into the first with and any of these ships if you just want to have one ship that is slightly larger than your average starter is going to be a really really good starting point for your adventures into the first so yeah that is it for the rsi sioux series they are class leading ships and where they are not leading they tend to be equaling so Awesome, awesome lineup. It's already in white box, so I expect to see this ship, considering how much RSI stuff they already have. I would guess maybe Q2, latest Q3 next year for its full release. Anyhow, that has been it for me. I hope you found it at least somewhat informative. And as I said, I will definitely go make a video on the Star Engine because that is going to be a industry-wide game changer if it works fully. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Goodbye.